the latest in the canon saga as it all unfolds and each day it gets deeper and darker and more depressing. Yes, I'm talking about the R5 and the R6. Let's go take a look over at EOS HD. I know, I know, EOS HD, he's an idiot, he gets it all wrong. Well, I don't know that that's fair to say. Everything's been pretty spot on so far. We'll see, only time will tell. I'm just talking about the camera news of what's happening. Don't shoot the messenger. I didn't write the article, I didn't do the testing. And in this case, EOS HD didn't even do the testing. So let's not even look at his site. Let's pop over here to this site that was originally in a different language and Google is translating it for us. I only speak English. This is a study of the overheating of the Canon EOS R5. So, <laughs> this, this may be broken, it is Google Translate, but we'll try and go through this. So it says, prepare to disassemble the body to measure the temperature of various parts when it is overheated. Oh, okay, this is great. They're gonna do uh, a FLIR, like a thermal imaging test on the R5, pulling it apart, this is fantastic. We can actually get down to what's getting hot, which components are heating up, and we can get to the bottom of the R5 debacle. So you turn on the camera and you record 8K. Wait 20 minutes and overheat. Now the room temperature is 28 degrees Celsius. Uh, I did pull up a Celsius to Fahrenheit converter just because for my own sake. So that's 82 degrees in the room is what it says. Let's see, five minutes passed. So now we've got 40 degrees Celsius, so this is on the camera outside, external, like on the camera body right now. Four degrees Celsius, that is 104 degrees Fahrenheit. That's pretty That's pretty warm and toasty for a camera. Uh, 10 minutes passed, and now it's at, let's see, let's zoom in here. I can't even see, 45. So it's warming up a little bit, not, uh, not terribly so. That's 113 degrees. Overheating warning icon appears on time at 17 minutes, and now it's at 52 degrees Celsius. 56, overheating shut down on time within 20 minutes. 56 degrees Celsius. So let's go to 56, that's 132 degrees Fahrenheit. That's uncomfortably warm. I don't know if it's uncomfortably warm for a camera, but it certainly is for me. Uh, measure the temperature of the battery in the sensor card slot. 50 degrees Celsius, so we're kind of the same, 55, okay. Let's scroll through here. After two minutes, disassemble the machine and complete the measurement of the motherboard temperature because the temperature dropped after two minutes. So the hottest temperature on here that I see is 43 degrees Celsius. So the hottest we've seen so far is 55. The motherboard cooled to 32 degrees Celsius. It seems that the temperature doesn't decrease much at this time. You can shoot for five minutes, open the back cover to continue recording and prepare for the next overheating. Okay, so they're gonna shoot it again. We're gonna warm this thing back up, 40 degrees uh, Celsius. There we go, 60 degrees Celsius. That's the hot spot. So let's do 60, I believe that's like 140. Okay, great, oh, it gets up to 65. So six minutes and 43 seconds uh, overheat shutdown. So again, overheats and shuts down because it gets to 65 degrees Celsius, which is 150 degrees Fahrenheit. That's pretty warm. Uh, prepare to install the BIOS battery, which will reset the machine clock and then install the camera to shoot. So the guy takes out the battery. So this was discussed a lot in the R5, you know, mystery shenanigans that if you pop the battery out, like does that reset everything? No, it doesn't. Well, there's an internal battery that stores like the date and time and some of that, you know, basic information about the camera. Maybe we need to take that out. So he takes it out. Time reset. Okay, there you go, because you took the BIOS battery out. So you got to reset the date and time. And look at that, a recording again. So the Canon R5 overheating is controlled by the timer, not the thermometer. Conclusion, there is nothing to say. <laughs> so what does all this mean? Well, the camera got up to 65 degrees Celsius. Would it get hotter? I don't know, you could keep, keep popping the battery out and putting it back in so you can keep restarting the camera over and over and over again. And maybe it would warm up to the point that the, the CPU melts or the sensor melts or whatever. Um, but it is interesting that the battery removal, that internal battery, removing that and put it back in is enough to reset uh, that timer. And, and being a timer, you know, rather than a true thermometer, because a true thermometer shouldn't matter what the battery says, right? It's just taking a reading and going, oh, it's, it's too hot, it's too hot, like you can't record. But if it's a, a, like a stored in, in memory somewhere, not an active reading of, of the actual temperature, well, by resetting the battery, well then that kind of proves that there's something else going on here. 
Is it nefarious? I don't know, we don't have proof of that yet, but there's something going on where it's storing the fact that the camera overheated and now a timer kicks on and you pull a battery out and then that timer resets. The camera could still be warm, but it does seem to cool down relatively quick and then it heats up relatively quick as well. So there's some kind of thermal issue going on, but the actual like cool down time, that is the timer that people have issues with. Is this what Canon will fix in their firmware? Who knows? I don't know. I'm curious to see what gets done with the R6, because I've talked about this before, but the R6 is far more interesting to me than the R5. The R5, huge megapixel count, it's you know trying to do 8K raw and 4K 120. The R6 is 20 megapixels and it's trying to do far less. So why is that one overheating? Is it the way it's designed? Was it intentional? Was it not? I don't know. Is 150 degrees too hot for a camera? I don't know. But I thought I'd share that information as these updates are coming out. And people are doing these fun, quirky tests, pulling cameras apart, shooting with you know thermal imaging. This is this is the joy of being passionate about this stuff. People think I make these videos for some kind of like clickbait or just for people to click on them. I do it because I think this is interesting. I like knowing what people are doing on the internet with these cameras to dig, dig in deep and see like what's going on, what makes this thing work? Is there a workaround? Is it actually dangerous? Is it not? Who knows? Is there is there a hack? Is there a mod? We'll find out. But it takes people like this, pulling the camera apart, taking the the, the temperature readings off of the in, internals of the camera to give us those answers, which I really do appreciate. And so there is a, a article up on EOS HD where Andrew does a breakdown of it. You can go read that over there if you'd like. Uh, I, I find it all just very fascinating and just thought I'd share.